to start really general. I want to know, um, I think it's important to talk about Rodney. We were just talking about this off camera about people that actually know him. So tell mm -hmm. me about your brother. Tell me about y'all's relationship and just who he is. Well, my brother is the fourth child in the family. There's six of us. He was born fourth. And uh, he's right over me. And uh, he's always looked after me. He's, he's a, a good person. Uh, he's definitely been my keeper since day one. Uh, he's, he's very uh, loving and giving. So, and uh, he's been wrongfully convicted of this crime. And to this, to this day, we haven't had justice because there's evidence, there's testimony, there's medical forensic science out there that has proved his innocence, but they have yet to admit all this in court. And we have to ask ourselves, why not? Why won't they test the DNA? What is the problem? And we've been asking that from day one. That's all we ever asked for, is the testing of all evidence, calling of all witnesses in a fair trial. And if you can convict them on that, then there it is. But uh, all the evidence points to other people. I want to know about, because um, you, you know you brought it up already, I want to know about when this all unfolded decades ago. You know, what's running through your head? You talk about your brother's your keeper. You had that great relationship with him, and you know him. You know, yeah. when you hear all this happening, you know, what's running through your head? Like, was there a split second of, did my brother do this, or is it always, I know he's innocent? It was always, I know he's innocent. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even a doubt in my mind, because I've seen him and Stacy together multiple times. They've been to my house. And so there's never been a doubt in my mind. Uh, but where the, where the nightmare came in is when, when, when they charged him with this capital murder and uh, the prosecutorial misconduct, the, the investigation was blocked right at the beginning and that's, that's where the nightmare began because he hasn't had a stood a fair chance from day one. Let's talk about the fairness. I think I'm going to skip around to some of my last questions, but uh, I think one of those things was he had an all-white jury in this case. Um, you know, from that initial trial, mm -hmm. and, and you can say that as well, what are some of those things that you felt weren't fair? Was it the, the jury, just everything in that case, you know, what are some of those things that you felt just he wasn't dealt the right cards? Uh, he wasn't he wasn't dealt the right cards. Uh, his uh, court appointed attorneys wasn't doing their job. They wasn't calling witnesses. They wasn't doing what they were supposed to do. Uh, also, there was a all white jury. He didn't have a jury of his peers. Um, all elderly at that you know, uh, which tends to reach back, you know, into old mindsets, you know where I'm going. And so, like I said at the beginning, uh, it was just a Jim Crow trial from the beginning, you know, and uh, it's just another way of modern day lynching, you know. Yes, yeah, so you felt race was obviously very heavily played yes, in this. Yes, yeah. race was, and is. Um, I'm gonna go back up, let's talk about yesterday, really big day, you uh -huh. got the highest court in the entire land here. Uh, granting, saying that ruling that DNA evidence could be tested. Of course, that doesn't mean it, it is going to. Texas has to do it, but that's huge in terms of that next step. Um, when you hear that yesterday, what runs through your mind? Because that's what y'all have been pushing for this whole time. Yes. So now you've heard that from the highest court. How did that feel? That, that was a prayer answered to me and my family, to the community, because we all know uh, this case is, is it's just a travesty. It's just a miscarriage of justice here in this case. And so we were related. My mom, she couldn't stop thanking God, you know. And she, like she always tell me, God answers prayers, but it's in his time. And so it's, it was his time. And so we got the verdict that we so much pray for. I do want to ask you one question. Um, you've spoken on this before. What you would say in terms of you know, Rodney having the three total, you know, other sexual assault charges, another aggravated assault charge. You've talked about this feeling that there could be a setup there. I know you've talked about this. When people look at you and say that, that there's those other charges and other mm -hmm. cases, mm -hmm. what do you have to say to them when people say that, okay, maybe not in this Stacy trial, but there's four others, you know? Okay, what I say to that is, my brother has never been arrested, mm -hmm. indicted, nor convicted of any of those crimes. And so a man is presumed to be what? Innocent and to proven guilty. My brother has nev never even been arraigned on any of those charges. So they're all false allegations. I believe they were uh, put out there to paint a picture of my brother so they could get the verdict they wanted, which was death. They had to paint an ugly picture of Rodney Reed because other than that, he has never been to prison. He doesn't have a record. So how can you sentence a man to death with nothing? So they had to make him look ugly. And that's the job that the uh, 
Bastrop County DA's office did on my brother to get the death sentence. And I want to talk about the DA. Obviously, this is your community. You live here and, and you've got the DA who continues to this day. He refused that DNA testing. Um, did it ever feel hopeless for you at any point to see how hard they were going against your brother? Or you always held out knowing that we're going to make sure that, I mean, yesterday was a huge thing for y'all. So was there ever times of doubt of like, we just can't beat this or can't get them together? No, yeah. there's never no doubt because when you have truth, right, and justice on your side, and you have God on your side, you can do all things through God who strengthens you. And he is the one that has sustained this family and given us hope and knowledge and wisdom and showed us how to apply it to get what we've gotten so far. Mm -hmm. um, I think another important thing is the ruling from the Supreme Court yesterday. You know, in, in, in your opinion, what do you feel that this does for other black men that also feel they've been wrongly convicted? Do you feel like yesterday was also a big step just moving forward in terms for other people? It, it is, and it was. Uh, we've been talking with uh, different lawyers and stuff about getting these laws with men and getting them changed, you know what I mean? Um, and I, I, I pray and I know that this will open uh, the doors and eyes of people so they will look back into other cases that Charles Pennick prosecuted, that David, this poor Sanders, uh, Brian Gertz, they will look into that, okay? And they, they will see a pattern. And maybe one day justice will be had in Bastrop County Courthouse. But right now, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to get that. Yeah. What would you say to her family? Because they also went through something tragic. Yes. You know, and you, you knew, Stacey, you know, what would you say about your brother and her relationship as well? Because I think that was the big thing in the 2021 trial was the evidence not being released as well, that they actually knew each other. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what would you say about the whole situation in general? Of course, it's tragic any way you cut it, but yeah. do you feel it's not necessarily a family versus family thing? It's now just a justice thing, right? I, I believe uh, that it is about truth, right, and justice, mm -hmm. okay? Because I have no ill wills against the Stites family. I wish them well. I pray for them often because not getting justice for Stacy means my brother dying. You see what I'm saying? You follow me. So. And not only that, you know, everybody, no matter race, color, religion, deserves justice, deserves truth, and should stand on the right side, you know. Your brother has said this in his briefs. I talked to this attorney today, obviously. Um, the DNA testing on that belt, he mm -hmm. believes is going to exonerate him and, and show that it was her fiance. Correct. And you would echo that, correct? Do you correct. feel that once that gets done, that at least that's the next step of exoneration for him, right? Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly what we seek. We seek exoneration. You know, we don't, we don't want Rodney Reed free. We want Rodney Reed to be exonerated, to have his, all that taken up off of him because it was unjustly put on him. Yeah, so, yeah. I think my last question is uh, the support. I mean, your brother's had immense support. Um, I think the biggest, in 2019, you saw that execution get put off. I mean, I know that had to be, there's no question that was emotional for y'all. How does it feel to this day to continue to see support from not just these high level celebrities, but your own community or, or people you know, or people in DC? How's that been for y'all through this whole process? Through this whole process, see, it has been just that. It's been a process because in the beginning of this, it, it was all about Rodney. It was all about trying to get justice for Rodney and Stacy. And over the years, it's been 25 years going now, I've seen the injustice all across America, all across the nation, and I've seen a need to be a voice, to help echo the voice for other people. Let people know what's going on out here in our community. Let people know that racism still is alive. Let people know that there's prosecutorial misconduct running rampant here in these small town courts. And so I, I've dedicated the rest of my life to abolishing the death penalty. I'm in this fight for life. Yeah. This is not just till Rodney gets home. Yeah. I'm in this fight for life. I'm here to abolish the death penalty and make sure that these laws and stuff are do all that I can do to make sure that these laws and stuff uh, get changed. Um, last question is the Innocence Project is now on your brothers, with your brother. They've been, they're representing him. That's one of the biggest powerhouses in this entire country. How does that feel? Do you feel confident moving forward with, with such a big organization like that? Yeah, uh, from the moment they picked it up, I knew God was really working then and uh, Bryce Benjet, his, his, his lead attorney at the time when they picked it up, has been uh, remarkable and everything else. And, and he got us to the point to where 
he had to pass the ball off to somebody bigger and stronger that could finish this thing for him. And that's George Kendall. He's one of the best uh, death row defense attorneys in the nation. And, um, and, and see, that's how God works. He works through people. So uh, we're very grateful to have the Innocence Project representing my brother and uh, just trying to help us get justice out here. I know this can be a really hard question, but you kind of alluded to it earlier. You talked about if there's a fair trial, fair process. Should the DNA test come back? And, and, and I know it's not something you want to think about, but should that come back and it, it points towards your brother? What's the next steps for your family? Well, I don't see how it would, but we keep moving forward because you know DNA can be planted. And as long as they had it, and as long as they denied testing it, there's a reason. And so if all of a sudden, mysteriously, he comes up with his DNA on it, then that tells you right there it's a setup because if they had his DNA on it in the beginning, they would have tested it and they would have convicted him with it out the gate. So that, that, that dog is dead. He won't that's, hunt. That's the frustration, right, is that we're now waiting decades. And there's, yeah. the, there's also the possible case of that DNA could be degraded at this point. Yes, it could be, it could be contaminated, and that's one of the reasons why they said, you know, it's contaminated. Too many people has uh, handled this uh, DNA. And, but I, like I told everybody else, I said, everybody that handles that DNA has to sign out on a log, have to a chain of, it has to sign out. So you use, you take that list, you get their DNA, and you do a process of elimination, then you, you, you separate it like that. And so because they may have contaminated, because of course we never had it. So, so why should my brother have to suffer at their mistake of mishandling evidence? So therefore, it needs to be tested and we need to go through the proper, proper procedures in doing so. La true last question is, um, for viewers watching this, you're gonna have people on all ends, you've dealt with this for decades. You've got people on both sides, your side and, yes, and, yes, and yes, the other side. Yes. For people that may look at you or your brother and, and bring up things like the four other cases, right? Mm -hmm. Which I understand we're not, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people that still have the reservations? Ultimately, this is just a fight for your family, right? And it's it's a fight for what you feel is right. What would you say to people that still have doubts? The people that still have doubts, all I, all I say to them, look at the evidence. The evidence ain't gonna lie to you. The evidence ain't gonna lie to you. Look at the testimonies of sworn officers, statements. Look at all the, look at the credibility, look at everything. And then you make a rational decision, a judgment. A lot of people are judging and saying what they want to say and they don't know the facts. But all the evidence, you got the best medical forensics scientists in the world, Dr. Michael Bodden, he did JFK. He says there's no way possible. Dr. Phil hired his own medical examiner. There's no way possible. You got Dr. Riddick, Dr. Spence, no way possible. Robert Barardo, the original medical examiner, saying now he thinks he had made a mistake. So we got everything going on our side and they have nothing. So look at the evidence, and then you tell me with truth in your heart. And then I, and then I tell you something. Absolutely. Yeah. What did I miss? Did I miss anything that you want to say? <laughs> no, um, no, we will be having a we're upcoming. Uh, yeah, next steps. What's next steps? We will be doing, uh, uh, having a show of support here. Uh, probably, we don't, we're, we're, it's in the planning, but at the end of next month, uh, we'll be having a big rally. Yeah. Uh, probably be in Austin. Uh, on the courthouse steps. If not, it will be here, uh, Bastrop County Courthouse, and then we'll come back over here as usual. But we'll we, we, we're planning it right now, so it should be done by the next, within the next few days, and we'll start posting stuff.